Good morning. Happy Saturday. But this time, I'm on camera. How are you? And I'll be back in a minute. I'm from New York City, and I really love helping people like yourself, if that's you. Keep some more of your own heart or money. Yes, the challenges today are that much more challenging. <laughs> just saying, just saying. You know, I would have had my cup of coffee with me, but I already drank two sizable cups. So if I have any more, I will be swimming out of here. So just not a good idea at the moment, but I do hope that you have your cup of coffee or tea or water or whatever it is when you first wake up if you're listening to this earlier in the morning or whatever time just kick back a little bit I apologize for yesterday's audio show unbeknownst to me the audio clarity was like it was just for whatever the reason and I'm not sure the reason it was going in it was going out it was going in I have no clue what happened there so I said let me clarify some of this about talking about how I kept $100 below my food, my grocery budget for September. Now, this is what I have done that has helped me. So I'm going to put on my trusty teacher glasses, if you will. And I don't want to miss a beat because they want to make sure that you get the best of it. And again, I apologize for that audio problem from yesterday. Some things happen beyond our control. All right. Um, basically, before I even get to the bullet points in general, you kind of have to want to do something. So what I did was with great intention, example, at the beginning of the month of September, I sat down and I said, you know something, Jen? Challenge yourself. Can you get your grocery bill less, $100 less? That's money. That's real money, and it can be put toward saving. So I did this with great intention, and that is part of the bullet point I am going to read. So how did I save $100 off of my grocery budget? Well, I made up my mind to do this. This was a plan and a deliberate plan. Yes, yes, yes. You know, a lot of people do things out of habit because it's just, you know, out of habit. And sometimes people because they do things out of habit, forget to do things at times with great intention. For example, let's say that you plan all week long that you were going to deep clean your bathroom, for example. All week long, you said, I don't have time to I'll just go over some things quickly, but on Saturday, I plan to deliberately deeply clean the bathroom, like every single crevice, and you get the job done. That was an intentional plan and you carried it out. So that is precisely what I did in terms of my grocery budget. I said, I am deliberately going to shave $100 off of my grocery budget during the month of September. Okay. And I did it. <laughs> so have a plan and use the plan. Okay. I mean, that doesn't require a bullet number or anything. I mean, have a plan, create the strategy, right? So, the other thing that I did was I worked with the stuff that I already had. By doing that, I didn't have to, out of habit, go to the grocery store and grab more items off of the shelf. Sometimes we do these things again out of habit. Well, why are you grabbing things off the shelf? Well, because I'm in the grocery store and I should be grabbing things off the shelf. Mm, no, a better idea is to take stock and in inventory of what you have. Example, are you utilizing the stuff in your active pantry more than you could? Because I had gotten a really good deal on bread, sliced bread. And when it was on sale, what did I do? I froze it. So I said, you know what? One month, these are going to come in very handy for French toast, for bread pudding, for sandwiches. And that is exactly what I did during the month of September. There was plenty of bread and I got it at a good price. So when you see things that you or and your family actually uses and enjoys and it's on a good price, get it, get it, get it, get it. 
So I worked with the stuff that I had and the previous month, as I mentioned, the bread, for example. Now, when it came to the sandwiches, here's a trick that a lot of people forget to do, and it's also good for your general diet. I'm no nutritionist, but this just makes logical sense. If you bulk up your sandwiches, let's say with things like lettuce, tomato, sort of like a salad sandwich, and some people could do that even without the protein. I happen to like protein, but what I do, because protein things tend to be more expensive, depending on the kind of protein. But in this case, let's say uh, deli meat. But if you roasted a chicken, you, there's nothing to stop you from slicing down a piece of actual roast chicken and putting it on your discounted special bread and using a bunch of tomato and lettuce, maybe a pinch of mayo, a little bit of salt and pepper if you like. And you got yourself a really good filling sandwich all with the stuff that in all probability is sitting in your refrigerator anyway. So don't make the protein the star of the show, although it is really necessary because protein does shut off my appetite anyway. But they say that scientifically that has been proven. Um, let me see. I start my mornings with eggs, not 10 eggs, one egg, one jumbo egg. To me, it's cheaper to use one jumbo egg than to resort to using two smaller eggs. I rather use one single jumbo egg. But what did I do? I was on this kick of cut up onion and cut up red bell pepper, not a hot pepper, a red bell pepper. Sometimes bell peppers are so delicious. I could just eat it like an apple. Try to get them when they're at a better price. The red ones and the orange and the yellow tend to be a little higher than the green. But for me, the green tends to just, it just doesn't like me. I might like it, but it doesn't like me. But the red, the yellow, and the orange peppers, totally fine with me. Everybody is different. You know what works best for you. I bulked up my egg by using a pepper with it. And I was so full all morning. Find what works for you. Also, egg and cheese. One slice of cheese with your egg. Oh, my gosh. That is like shuts off your appetite so easily and rather expensively, in my honest. Um, I did not purchase any extra sugary snacks. Why? Well, I had a box of banana bread mix sitting around. I said, you know what? You can make your banana bread or muffins, whatever. And I made it in the form of a loaf. To me, it's easier. It's less cleanup. So I cut it into seven slices. And I knew for that whole week, that I would have a generous slice of banana bread. That's me. Do you like banana bread? And of course you can make your own from scratch scratch without even needing to buy the mix. I just happened to have gotten that mix at a really good price a few months back. And I said, you know what? That's going to be like my big treat. The rest of the month I made homemade applesauce with get a load of this one teaspoon of sugar. But the star of the show was cinnamon. I love cinnamon. And it's so easy to make your own homemade applesauce. And I made it with a generous amount of water because that water turns into that lovely juice, which it sits in, in the refrigerator. Now you could do it in two ways. You can make like, like chunks of apple, and I still call it applesauce, but it's really more like an apple cocktail. Or you could actually like make it an applesauce. Whatever you like, it's very inexpensive. So now that apples are at a fairly good price, take advantage of it if you like apples. So not paying more money for sugary snacks was a significant savings. Okay, so that, that was a good thing. Now, a pound of ground beef. Can I tell you something? A pound of ground beef was really, really a good deal. I didn't have to buy a ton of ground beef. I bought a pound of ground beef and I got a number of nights meals out of it. Well, how'd you do that, Jan? <laughs> I love meatball soup, okay? Now my meatball soup is very, very easy. Instead of making dumplings, what I do is I season up the meatballs, not with egg, not with breadcrumb, 
just like garlic powder, like flavorings. And I rolled them up into these teensy weensy cute little itsy bitsy meatballs. Typically for me, because I make them so small. So typically for me, for like a pound, I get about 40 to 50 of those miniature meatballs. So what I did was I browned them for a little bit of flavor. And then I just put them in my simmering soup pot. And what I like to do, in addition to about six cups of water, one to two bouillon cubes, any flavor of choice. Sometimes I use chicken bouillon to contrast, uh, or you could use beef, or you could use vegetable bouillon if you prefer, whatever flavor. And don't forget those ramen noodle packages if you run out of bouillon cubes, because that works wonders in a soup as a soup starter. I'm telling you, never ever get rid of those. They really, really work. And then I put in like a can and a half, like about, I would say it was about six or seven ounces of tomato sauce. If you don't have that, you could use tomato paste, okay? I let that simmer. You may want to put a little bit of chopped parsley, basil, or a little bit of garlic or garlic powder, whatever flavors that you like. Those like Italian type flavors, it was so good. And you could take, like I did, I happen to have some vermicelli left over from a half a box. And I broke those up, broke those up into these little noodles put the whole thing in. I got like, I think it was like seven bowls out of that. That's seven different meals. That is so cheap. <laughs> and of course I like to use the uh, sliced carrots and fresh onions and you know, your favorites. Another shortcut idea is to use mixed veggies in that. If you don't have, you know, the fresh ones, mixed veggies are a very good shopper secret. Always keep mixed veggies, whether it's by can or frozen in your home or apartment. So let's see. I made a turkey meatloaf knowing that I'm going to get seven meals out of my turkey meatloaf. I wanted to try ground turkey as a meatloaf. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. I had to flavor it up a little bit. Usually I do the beef one. This time around I did the turkey one. And I cut it up into seven slices, the same method like I would do with that, uh, you know, those loaf cakes, you know, the banana loaf cake example, seven generous slices. For me, that made about, because I had about a slice and a half each meal. So that got me through like about five meals. You see, do the math. This is what I mean by becoming a bit of a bean counter. Of course, I goof around. You're not going to sit around counting one bean, two bean. Of course not. <laughs> but... I knew that I got about five to seven meals from the meatloaf. I got about five to seven meals from the uh, snacks, rather, from the uh, banana loaf. I got uh, seven from the uh, meatball soup, about about seven bowls of from the meatball soup. And what I do, like whenever I have something like that, like a meatball soup, this, to me is very filling. Everything is in there. I love one pot meals. One pot meals not only saves you time, effort, energy, and cleanup. It also saves you money. So that's why when I use my, for example, slow cooker, I call that batch cooking by default. If you happen to have two slow cookers or one slow cooker going and something on the stove going, amazing. And as you know already, there was a horrible, rainy, rainy, horrible day. I mean, like it was so dank. It was like bone chilling. And I happened to find a bag of lentils in my pantry and I made lentil soup. I was craving lentil soup fresh. So I made that. I have a whole bunch of that still in my freezer. And that's the biggest tip of all. Now, before I get into that, I had uh, purchased tuna pouches. For me, I get two sandwiches out of one pouch. So if I'm like sharing, um, you know, one pouch of tuna, I will bulk it up again, the bulk up, you know, the sliced cucumber, the tomatoes. There's protein there, but it is not like taking over the sandwich. There's enough in there. And I will share a generous, nice sandwich, you know, with whoever wants to share it. <laughs> so you definitely can spread the wealth. Oh, stew beef. Okay. I had to look around carefully for this one because some of the prices were like, what? <laughs> I said, wait a minute, this is stew beef, but a little due diligence is in order. So I was able to, I forget the poundage, like the number by pound, 
but the package of the stew beef, the cut up cubes was $7.99. So I said to myself, whenever there's difficulty in finding a great price for me on something, I use what I call my rule of half. What do you mean, Jen? Well, don't just be happy with the cubes that they cut up for you. Yeah, it makes it a little convenient. But what I do is I go the extra mile. I will partially freeze those cubes, and then I will take a little time and sliver down while it is partially frozen because it makes it easier to cut. Because And I'm left-handed, and believe you me, I'm not the greatest cutting person in the world. <laughs> so doing it this way for me really helps. So I literally double the volume of that meat so that I could literally stretch the stew that much more. You could either continuously freeze the remaining slices or just make one batch. So what I did was make the one batch. I'm like, well, I'm doing this already. And it takes just as much effort. You know, there was an old timey episode and you know, I love old classic TV shows. And one of them of course involved a Brooklyn bus driver who had a friend that worked in a sewer. So us old timers know right away who I am talking about. Let's just put it this way. <laughs> they lived in Brooklyn in the scenario. And one of them was out of water in their home, okay? They needed a new janitor in the building. So the uh, bus driver person took on the role of janitor, of course, did not the greatest job. And of course, the sewer person, his friend, came up with what he had as a hot water bottle. They still make those, by the way, those red hot water bottles. And I could tell you a story about that in a minute as well. So he walked in and he, he said, I don't know if I'm mixing up two different episodes, but his friend walked in. He needed water from his uh, bus driver friend. And he said that uh, that they had company and they have to what? Stretch the soup. <laughs> so he borrowed some sink water and filled up his red hot water bottle. Let me just allude over since this is just like a regular kind of sort of chat uh, day. Oh, this is cute. When we had uh, Superstorm Sandy and we were out of power for almost a week. It was at this time of the year where not quite are we using the heat yet and there's no power. So yeah, okay, so you know where that goes. And we had a couple of those damp days, which of course subsequently followed the super storm. But my mom was, you know, at that time was elderly and she, you know, suffered with arthritis. And uh, at that time we were blessed enough to still have our gas stove. This is when you are super glad to have a gas stove. While the power was out, I had a gas stove. I didn't care. So I turned on the, uh, you know, I made some simmering water and I, you know, carefully, and it was half dark out because, you know, it was an evening and uh, she was really chilly and her arthritis was acting up. And I filled up that hot water bottle, you know, half and half. It was just warm enough to keep my mom tucked and nice, warm, toasty and cozy. And it made her a bunch of tea or coffee or whatever my mom wanted to, you know, anything to make her comfortable during that time. You know, there's something to be said about simple products. An old hot water bottle came in handy. But now let's get back to the grocery store. Okay. Basically, so another point that I have here is only work, I only worked with sale items. That's true. There are wonderful channels on here that remind us of that all the time. Why? Because it is true. Only work with the items that were on sale. And that's what I did. So I only worked with the sale items. And uh, what's this? Oh, okay. I got into stop being squeamish about trying off-brand products like we are so used to name brand products. We expect so much. And for the most part, they do uh, live up to their job. But if you're struggling to make ends meet, you could get a similar product at a discount. That's up to you. Try something at least once. Don't buy a whole bunch of something you're not familiar with. And then you wasted your money if you don't like it. Mm -mm. Try it once. You might like it. You might not like it, but at least you tried. So that's that's the way I look at it. In that case, it's a very, very helpful thing. And the final thing that I mentioned here is just live your life. You know, I wish I could say so much more, but I can't, okay? I, I, I just can't. I, I am very strongly opinionated about things that have changed, unfortunately, 
all I know is this, we have to make the best of what we can. Sometimes the best thing in the world is just live your life and just, you know, go out and throw a ball. <laughs> Seriously, just play catch, you know, uh, enjoy your dog, enjoy your cat, uh, call a friend, take a walk, um, take a break from all of these crazy stories going on in this world. We, you know what? I file in my mind because, you know, I'm a faithful person. So what I do is I literally hand over these woes and troubles to God. Okay. This is what I do. This is what works for me. And of course I work with the realities in my own world. I cannot take on the whole world. So I'm encouraging my wonderful viewers such as yourself, take some time for yourself, have fun, take a bubble bath, do something free, find something low cost in your community, get together with like-minded friends who don't mind being frugal. This is why I mentioned, this is why I mentioned, it is really, really for me, I cannot speak for other people, by having like-minded frugal friends, I don't always have to explain myself why I would rather bring my coffee with me in a travel mug. I don't have to explain it. By the way, a travel mug for a friend is a really good money keeping gift because that is the gift that keeps on giving making your own coffee at home in a good quality, invest a little bit in a good, better quality travel mug for your friend or for yourself. Make your own wonderful coffee at home that you know you like, that you know you enjoy, and you still have the ability to travel with your coffee. You don't have to impress anyone. That's why, like I said, like-minded, frugal-minded thinking, right? Well, listen, I'm wishing everyone an amazing, fantastic day. And I was so proud of myself making up my mind that I'm going to keep that $100. And I literally did. And I put it into savings. Every little bit helps. A little bit here, a little bit there. And at the end of the year, it adds up. Even at the end of the week, even at the end of the month. Like remember all week long on my no frills videos from this past week, I focus on, well, this is the beginning of the month. What can we do better this month that maybe we didn't do last month? Or for the people that maybe have not even $5 in their pocket at the end of the month, they're not going to advertise that. But certainly when times are better in the more abundant times of the month, put something away for that last week of the month. Get an envelope and write last week of the month. You don't have to make a big announcement about it. You just do it. It's for your sanity. And with the price of gas right now, at the time of this recording, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to put that little bit of money on the side. Thanks so much for spending your Saturday morning with me. Don't forget to come back every single weeknight, Monday through Friday. It is an audio show because my channel is an audio style show. I promise to try to be here in person on camera on my channel once a week. I am almost always on camera on Steve's show once a week. So it's actually two opportunities for me to like look at you. <laughs> so don't forget to head over to the Steve Young 74 channel. But Monday through Friday, strictly audio shows. Why? Because I like radio style shows. Just saying, just saying. Have a great day, everybody. Wonderful weekend. Please let us know any of your tips and tricks, money saving. We all can use them. All of us, including me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.